Assalamu alaikum brother and sisters and friends. I hope everyone is fine with the blessing of Almighty Allah. So without any delay, let's start today's video. Good. Good. وربما اتساع نطاق المواجهات وهي احتمالات أتمنى عدم تحققها لأنها يمكن أن تدفع بالمنطقة كلها إلى وضع غير معلوم I gave a talk on jihad and terrorism and Islamic perspective. The first question that was asked to me was by the American Consul General of Perth. And the first question he asked me, the Dr. Naik, do you consider Osama bin Laden to be a terrorist? Mm -hmm. And I told him, as far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I don't know. I haven't met him. I haven't targeted him. He is neither my friend, neither is my enemy. I cannot give the answer based on the news reports of BBC and CNN. No. If you want the answer based on BBC and CNN, you have no option but to say he's a terrorist. But the Quran says in Surah Jurat, chapter number 49, verse number 6, that whenever you get information, check it up before you pass it on to the second person. Yes. So therefore, as far as Osama bin Laden is concerned, I cannot say whether he's a terrorist or not. He's neither my friend, neither my enemy, I haven't integrated him. But what I can say very well, that we have got established proof, very well, from the same media controlled by them, from CNN, from BBC, we know that thousands of innocent Afghans have been killed in Afghanistan. Thousands of Iraqis have been killed in Iraq. Yes. Even if they agree, 9-11, they say, was done by Osama bin Laden. No proof. Hypothetical. When the Afghanistan government wants proof, George Bush gives it to Tony Blair. He gives it to Musharraf. Hmm. And normally, even if we agree, for sake of argument, Osama bin Laden did it, for sake of argument. But does it justify in killing thousands of innocent people? Normally, on international level, there's extradition policy that whenever any person who's a culprit in a country goes to another country, you can get him back. For example, India and UK have extradition policy. A few mm. years back, one of the music director, Nadeem, a of Indian government, he was involved in murder. He goes and sits in UK. The Indian government has extradition policy with UK, but when they wanted him back, they said, prove it that he's a culprit. Many people from India went there. Our police force went there. They could not prove. They even had to pay for the lawyer charges of that Nadeem. Yes. We know that in the Bhopal gas tragedy, we know that thousands of innocent Indians were killed. The person of Union Carbide goes to America and sits there. Imagine the Indian government attacking America, give the person back. Is it right? Why don't they do it? It is proved. Union Carbide, thousands of innocent human beings killed, injured, wounded, damaged for life, families mm -hmm. ruined, ran away. We have extradition policy, nothing happens. So Afghanistan and USA don't have extradition policy yet. Even if you agree, for sake of argument, Osama bin Laden did it, it is not justified killing of innocent human beings. More than three to 5,000 Afghans were killed. Then, after a couple of years, goes to Iraq, weapons of mass destruction. And they go there, after the attack, they don't find anything. Yet, they are controlling Iraq. Yes. What is the cause? What is the reason? And people in Iraq are more troubled. They were troubled with Saddam Hussein. You are not a good Muslim. You are a practicing Muslim. I am not in favor of Saddam Hussein. But the trouble they are facing after America has come to Iraq is multiple times more. More people are being robbed, more people are being raped. The main purpose is what? Is oil. oil. It's an open secret. Brother and sisters, I hope you are enjoying today's video. If you are enjoying today's video, then it's a request to you guys. Please subscribe my channel and press the bell icon. So whenever a new video will be public, you will get its notification first. So let's continue watching today's video. So I told the American consul general that time that according to me, number one terrorist in the world is George Bush. Hmm. And I'm a person who keeps on speaking very often. I had gone to Australia just a couple of months after 9-11. It comes as headlines in the newspaper at that time, December 2001. Dr. Zakir Naik calls himself a fundamentalist and says George Bush is terrorist number one. <laughs> I did not know of any speaker on a public level, I don't know, maybe, maybe, who has condemned hmm. George Bush as terrorist number one. Today. It is very common. I can name a hundred top personalities. And we know that the Honorable Justice Husband, I didn't know that even he considered. Rightly, he's an honest judge. And I agree with that. No. I don't know when is the first time he said, I don't want to compete with him. He's more senior to me. I don't know when is the first time he said that. But now when we read records, we come to know that the President of Venezuela, Hago Chavez, he said that the biggest terrorist in the world is George oh. Bush. The President-elect of Bovillia, 
Evo Morales, he said that George Bush is a terrorist. The famous singer and activist of America, Harry Belfont, he said the biggest terrorist in the world is George Bush. An MP in UK, an MP in UK by the name of George Galloway, he said the biggest terrorist mm -hmm. in the world is George Bush. And he said that the blood that is there on the hands of George Bush and Tony Blair is much more than the bombers who have done bombing in London. Oh my God. And when he was asked, he said, it will be justified. George Galloway, who's MP in UK, he said, it will be justified that if a suicide bomber goes and attacks and kills Tony Blair without injuring any other innocent human being, that suicide bomber will be justified. Who said that? Yes. George Galloway. We have Jyoti Basu, a few months back, he said, when George Bush came to India, that number one terrorist is George Bush. Everyone says that, but the Indian government wants to invite him. For what? So that we learn the art mm. of terrorism. <laughs> Recently, a couple of days back, it was a news article in the newspapers that the Nobel Prize winner, Nobel Prize winner Betty Williams, she said that she would love to kill George Bush. Oh. She would love to kill George Bush, which I differ. After one of the talks in London, which I gave on jihad and terrorism, there was a youngster Muslim who said that Allah Akbar, death to George Bush. There were many non-Muslims there, and a full talk, the impact mm. went down. So I told him, if you see the history of a beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he prayed to Almighty God. There were two Umars who were staunchly against Islam. He prayed to Almighty God that at least let one of the Umar get daya, they become Muslim, so that they yes. will be a help for Islam. And we know the second Caliph of Islam, Hazrat Umar may Allah be with him. He accepted Islam. The same way, I prayed to Almighty God that at least Almighty God gives daya to George Bush. Or at least to one of them, mm. George Bush or Tony Blair. <laughs> Imagine if there's so much crunch against Islam, if they accept Islam, what will happen? Brother and sisters, I hope you have watched today's video and I hope you like the answers of Dr. Zakir Naik because his answers pass according to Quran and Hadith. So, in the first part of today's video, we have watched the video of which is from Iran. Everyone knows that there is a war between Israel and Palestine and every Arab country is getting united to put pressure on Israel. But Iran is leading and they have start giving warning to the Israel. And they said if Israel don't stop bombing and rocket attack on Palestine, then we will send our army to the Palestine to fight with Israel. And this is the last warning to the president of Israel. This is a big news coming from Iran. So what will happen next? We will be watching in coming days. So after that, we watched a video of Dr. Zatan in which he told us that who is the biggest terrorist in the world and and Dr. Zakir Knight explained it logically and from the news of different media channels and he proved that United States is the biggest terrorist in the world. So what do you think about his answers? Please let us know by giving your comments below. If you like today's video, then it's a request to you guys. Please share this video with your friends and family members so they can get benefit from it. So see you guys in next video. Till then, Allah Hafiz.